Okay, so we, we work through that, God. And now that we know row operations, we can solve an eigenvalue problem. So an eigenvalue problem is deals with the solution to this matrix equation. So that's a matrix A times a vector V is equal to, remember a matrix times a vector gives you a vector. Right? And that's equal to lambda, which is a scalar, times a vector V, the same vector V right, on both sides of the equation. And so anytime you're dealing with matrix and, and, and vector equations, it's, it's useful to, to, in your head, make sure that all the terms, you know, if a term is a matrix, it needs to add to a matrix or be equal to a matrix. If a term is a vector, it needs to add to a vector or be equal to a vector. That's how you kind of keep these things straight. Right? So here, a vector is equal to a vector. Okay? Now I can rewrite that equation. I can rearrange it, move, move it to one side of the equation, right? one side of the equ equation here. Now, what did I just say? My, I got a little lazy with my notation here, right? Because that's a vector, subtracting a vector, that's okay. But can a vector equal zero? What should it be? The zero vector, right? So there, there should be a little vector symbol over my zero right there. Okay. Now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor that vector out of the equation. So I'm going to factor that vector out of the equation. And again, now like I have a term that's a matrix, if I, if I don't multiply by the identity matrix here, then this equation doesn't make sense because I can't have a matrix minus a scalar. Right? But just when I, if I w were to then multiply the equation back through, it still makes sense, right? Because now if I, if I go from here to there, right? If I take a vector and multiply by the identity matrix, I just get the vector back. Right? So if I, if I distribute this vector across that to get back to there, the vector times the identity matrix just gives me lambda times that vector. So what I'm trying to do in an eigenvalue problem is I'm trying to find the lambdas and the vector which solve this equation, the unknown vector. And for this equation, to have a non-trivial solution, right? So obviously the trivial solution is if V is a zero vector, that's true. That's a true statement, right? That's, that's what we call the trivial solution. Right? We don't care about that one. We want the non-trivial solution. So in order for us to solve this equation, or in order for this to be true uh, in a non-trivial case, if in this, this will, a non-trivial V vector will exist if and only if the determinant of this A minus lambda I is equal to zero. So this is something you just need to memorize. This is how you go about solving an eigenvalue problem. Determinant of A minus lambda I is equal to zero. So we actually need to solve that. Okay. And again, in the context of stress, which we're going to learn later, remember I said before, we're going to learn that the stress is actually a tensor, which we can sort of think of as a three by three matrix. And in that context, the principal stresses, which are the ones we can measure easily, will turn out to be the eigenvalues of the, of the stress tensor, right? the lambda. So in the context of stress, the lambdas um, are the eigenvalues, also known as the principal stresses. And there'll be examples to follow in the context of stress. That's the whole purpose of kind of going through this exercise. Uh, so let's look at an example here. What we're going to do is we're just going to solve for the eigenvalues of the matrix 4, minus 5, 2, minus 3. And we'll just do a 2 by 2. But the same procedure applies for a 3 by 3, for a 4 by 4, for an n by n matrix. Okay? 
So we want to find out, we want to first compute the determinant of a minus lambda i. That's equal to the determinant of 4 minus 5, 2 minus 3 minus lambda 1, 0, 0, 1. That's equal to the determinant, just doing the math. So that's the matrix with four entries there. So how do we compute the determinant of a two by two? Remember my x? It's uh, this minus that. So then that's writing 4 minus lambda, minus 3 minus lambda, minus minus 5 times 2. We multiply that out, we have lambda squared plus oops, lambda squared minus lambda minus 2. So that's just a quadratic equation. We can, we can use the quadratic formula to find the roots of that guy. Right? So notice how for a 2 by 2 matrix, we have a lambda squared term. So how many, how many lambdas are there? OK. If you had a 3 by 3, you'd have a lambda cubed term there. How many lambdas would there be? If you had an n by n matrix, how many lambdas would there be? Yeah, n. Right. So you're always going to have as many eigenvalues as the size of the matrix. Uh, and eigenvalue problems really only make sense in, for square matrices. Okay. Um, this thing here is called the characteristic polynomial. You might hear that. It's called the, the characteristic polynomial. Um, we can factor this. I mean, we can use a quadratic formula. In this case, we can factor it really easily. And remember, all of this is equal to 0. So therefore, the roots of this, lambda 1, comma 2, are minus 1 and 2. So the eigenvalues of that matrix are minus 1 and 2. Okay. So for the eigenvalues, I mean sorry, eigenvectors, right? The eigenvectors then, we, if we take the, the eigenvalues, which we know now, we plug them back into that equation, a minus lambda i times v is equal to 0. Then we have a matrix equation that we can solve for v. And the easiest way to do it is to use those row operations. So for lambda 1 equal to minus 1, that was one of the eigenvectors. A minus lambda 1i times v is equal to the zero vector. So if we write that out, we have 4 minus 5, 2 minus 3. That was the A matrix. Now we're going to plug in for lambda 1 times the identity matrix. That's equal to minus 5, 0, 2, minus 2, 0. Right? OK. Now we're going to use our row operations. We're going to say 1 half r2 plus 1 fifth r1. Right? So I kind of combine them there. But we're going to get 1 minus 1, 0, 1 minus 1, 0. Now, 
Remember I said the goal when you're doing row operations, the goal is to make this thing look like the identity matrix. Is there any row operation I can do that will make that look like the identity matrix? No. Right. So this is a, I mean, yeah, I can't make it look like the identity matrix, but I can, I can do another row operation. Right? I can just, <coughs> I can just add or multiply minus one times row two plus row one, or, or I'm sorry, row one plus row two, and that will leave me with this. So this matrix that we started with is said to be rank deficient. And this will always be the case with an eigenvalue problem. And that's one of the reasons I think it's easier to do these with row operations because you'll always end up with something that looks like this. If you try to solve these like by back substitution like you might do in using your algebra 2 skills, you might just confuse yourself because you're never going to get a solution. You're never going to get a unique solution because whenever you see this kind of uh, system of equations in the reduced form like this, what this implies is that there are infinitely many solutions. Okay? There are infinitely many solutions. And so because there are infinitely many solutions, remember our in the solving in the solving the equations, usually like the first equation we associate with like V1, the first component of the vector V, the second one. V2, the second component of vector V. <coughs> what this implies is that V2, when you ever have a row of zeros like that, V2 is free. So we can choose it to be anything. So we'll choose it to be, in this case, V2 equals 1. So then if we choose V2 equal to 1, let's write out the first equation in terms of, so we have 1 times V1 minus 1 times v2 is equal to 0. Right? That's what that equation implies. Right? In other words, v1 is equal to v2. We chose v2 to be equal to v1. Therefore, our vector v that's associated with lambda 1 is equal to 1, 1. Right? So that's an eigenvector. Okay? Of this matrix. Now, because there are infinitely many of them, <coughs> whenever you try to use MATLAB to uh, solve an eigenvalue problem, so the, the, the MATLAB command to solve eigenvalues is just EIG, eig. So eig of the matrix A will return the eigenvalues. When you, I forget what it is for eigenvectors. I, maybe it's maybe it's I V or something, but anyway, <clears throat> whenever you use it, because there are infinitely many, well, what it has to make a choice about what to report to you, right? And so what Mat, what uh, MATLAB will always do is return a unit vector. So it will. So this is a vector. If I divide by the magnitude of this vector, I have a unit vector, right? So if I divide by the, the square root of the sum of the squares, right? So in this case, 1 over the square root of 2. 1 over the square root of 2. Right? So if you wanted to like check your, you know, if, if I ask you to do one of these for a homework or on a test and you want to check your answer with respect to MATLAB, you might work through the row operations, right? But then when you go check MATLAB, you're, you're, it's going to report 0 .707, 0 .707. You're like, oh, I got the wrong answer. Well, no, you didn't. Just, just divide by, right? Divide by the magnitude, and, and you can compare your answer to MATLAB. <clears throat> so, that was just for, for, you know, so for then for lambda two, which was equal to two, then you know, a minus lambda 2i would be equal to 
2 minus 5, 0, 2 minus 5, 0. So we're in the same situation. Uh, perform a row operation. We can reduce that to 2 minus 5, 0, 0, 0, 0. And since V2 is free, choose it to be I'm going to choose it to be equal to 2. I can choose it to be anything, right? I'm going to choose it to be 2. And I mean, almost always you, you, you choose it to be 1, and then you just work it out, right? But in this case, if you choose it to be 1, you're going to get fractions over here. And I don't, I don't want to deal with fractions. So uh, I just, if, I, if I choose it to be equal to, v, to 2, and then you work through the details, um, what you end up with is that v associated with lambda 2 is equal to 5, 2, right? So if you want to compare this to MATLAB, what would you multiply by? What's the magnitude of this vector? Square root of 29. Square root of 29? So 1 over that. So if you want to compare your result to MATLAB, 1 over the square root of 29. So MATLAB would report, you know, in, in decimal places, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to actually perform this operation. And so that would be like 0 .707, 0 .707. I'm not sure what that looks like. Okay. Now, I'm going to take a, a little aside here. This is not uh, something I'm... I'm going to test you on by any means, but I just feel like I'm doing you a disservice if I don't spend the next 10 minutes teaching you what I'm about to teach you. Uh, 